Hi, everyone. Uh, so as Benoit said, I'm Sarah Winchester, and I'm a research associate in the Bruno Lab. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker of today, Dr. Heiko Lickert. Uh, uh, Dr. Lickert will be giving a talk today on insulin producing beta cell regeneration for diabetes remission. And uh, Dr. Lickert is the current director for the Institute of Diabetes and Regeneration uh, Research at the Hemholtz Diabetes Center. Uh, to name a few of his many accomplishments, uh, he received his PhD in molecular embryology from Albert Ludwig's University and Max Planck Planck Institute uh, for Immuno Immunobiology in 2001. Uh, Dr. Lickert uh, was a principal investigator at Hemholtz Zentrum München in Germany from 2005 to 2011, where he worked on endoderm development and regeneration. Um, he has been the director of the Institute for Diabetes and Re Regeneration at the Technical University of Munich since 2011. Uh, please welcome him for our first talk today. Thanks, Sarah, for this introduction. I hope you hear me well. Yes? Yes, we do. Yes, thanks. So um, thanks for the kind introduction and um, thanks also for inviting me, Benoit. I, I really first uh, should say um, congratulations on that, these 20 years of research. I think you have done a great job and I know you now for uh, that time. Uh, and um, it is no wonder that you have performed so well. It was not only the people, but it's also your interaction with the people and uh, your curiosity and uh, uh, and your your heart for the science I think um, uh, that explains everything so I will talk about um, beta cell regeneration and diabetes uh, remission today um, but before I do this I want to go back uh, to um, Toronto for a second um, and I have to say uh, that was the best time in my life. That was my postdoc time in Toronto. Uh, and my heart is still beating for Toronto, uh, not only because we were working on heart development, but I, I think it was the best collaboration ever. Uh, I mean, this here is the view from our residence. This is where June and I were living. Uh, perfect view to the Sea Hall uh, in Toronto. Uh, but also very close to the Sick Kids Hospital in Mount Sinai, where I, where, where I was working in Janet Rosen's lab. And so um, we were cooperating here on this paper, June and, and, and me. And I, I remember still that I always went through Sick Kids, had grabbed a coffee with Benoit um, and with June, and we had these great discussions. Then we were going to the bench and we had to dissect embryos uh, in the night. It didn't matter because after the bar at 12, we were going in and then getting these free somite stage embryos uh, to study them. And it was worth doing it. Uh, it made all our careers. I think um, we're all professors now and directors everywhere, but uh, what we have in common is that our heart beats for science. And um, it is not only the science, but it's also friendship, which, um, you know, um, uh, is uh, was built at that time. and. Um, I really had great fun um, with Benoit and Tanya, but also um, with doing research. So I'm also going back to Toronto now, not 20 years, it's, it's more like um, 100 years. Uh, and you probably know that um, uh, Toronto is famous for the discovery of insulin, which was truly a breakthrough in, in medicine. Uh, it uh, resulted in a Nobel Prize just three years after discovery, and we're celebrating insulin's discovery uh, this year. So it's 100 years. Um, and uh, Frederick Banting was already mentioning in his Nobel Prize lecture that insulin is a treatment. Actually, it was curing, the, uh, it was saving people's life. The people were dying from type 1 diabetes at the time. So people don't have to die anymore from diabetes, but the numbers are going up and it's not a cure. So we have 460 million people uh, with diabetes uh, nowadays, and it's a devastating disease because it's slowly killing. Um, basically, it, um, it, um, if, if you don't treat it well, and there is no um, current treatment which um, can actually cure, uh, so you get uh, secondary complications, micro and macrovascular complications. Uh, and uh, you can see this here, it's not only uh, a burden for the people, but it's also a socioeconomic bur burden. And every seven seconds, a, a person dies from, from diabetes. It's really bad. 
Uh, and we really have to find more disruptive therapies uh, for that disease. Now, um, diabetes develops when the beta cell in the pancreas fails. So the insulin producing beta cell is, is really key uh, to both of the forms we know, um, and there is more forms nowadays, but uh, type one and type two diabetes, um, you probably know type one is autoimmune disease, which destroys the beta cell in the pancreas. And it has some early onset uh, manifestation before year, um, usually in, in, the, in the first 10 years of life. And then you, uh, the kids have uh, 12 to 18 years less life expectancy. So that is really bad. Uh, so this is five to 10% of the cases, but the big chunk is the 90% type two diabetics. Uh, and um, in both diseases, the metabolic stress or the autoimmune stress leads to um, either loss of function or to destruction of the beta cells. And if we could protect the beta cells, um, we would have actually a much better treatment because currently everything is symptomatic. So they're treating the high blood glucose levels, but not uh, the root cause of the disease. There are two treatments which actually can uh, cure the disease, which is islet transplantation, but there we haven't got enough donor materials. That is why we are working on stem cell replacement of beta cells, and you have heard of this, I guess, um, and uh, bariatric surgery for morbidly obese people. And this is an example, uh, even if the people are 10 years um, on insulin already, on insulin injections, after bariatric, bariatric surgery, and even after a, um, a couple of weeks, uh, beta cell function comes back. And that tells you, this is the human experiment, which tells you um, that we can actually um, regenerate beta cell function and mass. And that is what exactly we're working on. Now, um, to understand um, um, regeneration, you have to understand where the beta cells come from. And a few years, five years back, we identified that beta cells are not all the same. And that was the first entry point into understanding how you could regenerate beta cells. And so what we identified is that there is proliferative beta cells and there are more mature beta cells in the pancreas. And the pancreas does not really generate um, new beta cells from stem cells like the gut or the blood or the skin. Uh, it is the beta cells which you're born with. And at least in the rodent models, there is no stem cell source. So um, you have to understand the heterogeneity of beta cells to have basically um, an entry point for islet regeneration. And so, um, so our current view is that, so this is an islet of Langerhans. This is 2% of the pancreas. Uh, it's important for blood glucose regulation and forming uh, the hormones. The most important are being glucagon uh, during um, starvation and, um, and um, insulin during food intake. And the cells are wrapped around the blood vessels and 90% of the cells are really just measuring glucose and insulin and secreting insulin into the bloodstream. And this higher order of polarity uh, really gives them dysfunction. So architecture and function is uh, closely linked you can read this in, in, in this paper in a review, but there's also a minority of cells which basically can compensate when there is need, for instance, um, in obesity or pregnancy. And so um, it is really key to understand this heterogeneity um, uh, in um, a normal pancreas during, um, during normal homeostasis, but also during disease progression uh, to understand protection and regeneration. And so just last year, uh, we have shown that uh, when you combine pharmacology, single cell RNA sequencing and disease models in mice, you can actually understand this heterogeneity. So by single cell RNA sequencing from a healthy to a de-differentiated diabetic state. So we killed 80% of the beta cells with a toxin. And then a hundred days into the experiment, we did single cell RNA sequencing and we have actually understood um, how the beta cells lose their identity. And, and the good thing is they're still hanging around, but they're not in function. They're not functional anymore. But we identified a lot of new markers and entry points, how we can actually regenerate these uh, de-differentiated cells. And so beta cells are always heterogeneous, um, also in homeostasis, but also during disease progression. And this is important to understand how a diseased beta cell looks like if you want to regenerate that one. And so we identified path and mechanisms with single cell RNA sequencing. And then we actually went in 
um, and um, treated these animals for 100 days daily injections with, um, with glucagon-like peptide 1, which binds to a seven transmembrane receptor, where we shuttled in estrogen for targeted delivery of estrogen. And we could show that this protects beta cell mass. But it is also insulin, which directly acts on beta cells um, to redifferentiate these cells um, into a functional state. And so we can cure basically diabetes um, in mice and the results were astonish astonishing. Uh, but now we obviously have to translate this to human. Now to identify novel um, players um, in uh, the endocrine and beta cell development and to uh, drive uh, stem cells into beta cell lineage, we study development and we have generated a lot of knock-in models. And what you can see here is beta cells when they're just born during pancreas development. And using these tools and together with profiling single cell or bulk RNA-seq, uh, we identified the paths and mechanisms and novel components. And so just recently, um, we really um, stumbled upon a real cool new factor which, which we identified in these screens. And it didn't have a name, it had nothing. Uh, beside a few domains, and the domains were striking. So this molecule came up during pancreas development, specifically in beta cells, when beta cells were uh, born, and when insulin uh, is around, so the ligand for the receptor, for the insulin receptor. And so, uh, so this molecule has similarities to the insulin receptor in terms of the cysteine-rich domain, but also similarities to the IGF-2 receptor. Uh, which by domain similarities linked it to the insulin IGF signaling pathway. And because of a lot of data, which I cannot show you, but which you can read up in a, in a recent paper, due to the structure and the function of this molecule, which didn't have a name, uh, we called it insulin inhibitory receptor. And indeed, we found 50 years after discovery of the insulin receptor and 100 years after insulin, a novel component of this pathway. And its function is really to um, intercept with pathway activation. So it's a negative regulator of, of insulin signaling. And this is just a movie to summarize how uh, the molecule acts. So after insulin binds to the insulin receptor and that one activates um, the pathway, inceptor binds to the insulin receptor activated complex via an AP2 motif. And because these are dimers, you have a concatamerization of these molecules and they get internalized via clufferin mediated endocytosis. And that shuts off the signal. And the nice thing is if we, if we knock out um, the, that inceptor, uh, the insulin inhibitory receptor, or if we block this interaction, we can uh, sustain insulin signaling. And that is what pharma industry was searching for for, for decades, for insulin sensitizers. So that was really a major discovery. Uh, and it was basically by just doing thorough work, uh, developmental biology screens uh, and identifying some new components of the ignorome, I would say, you know, the 98% we haven't studied yet. So just to summarize, so Inceptor counteracts insulin signaling in beta cells. And the nice thing here is that it's relatively specific, tissue specific to a few cell types. And in the pancreas, it is essential to shield the pancreas when the beta cells are formed from insulin autoactivation. Uh, it does um, this by clufferin mediated endocytosis and desensitization of the activated insulin receptor complex. And it is an entry point for us uh, to basically um, sensitize insulin signaling in beta cells. And that will, so beta cells are really dependent on the signaling pathway. Uh, for all their functions, for beta cell health, for survival protection, and that ha um, and also for this compensatory proliferation. And that obviously um, um, tells you that this is a very interesting target uh, for beta cell regeneration. So last but not least, the clinical relevance. So intensive insulin therapy uh, you can do, but um, it has severe side effects. Um, and um, uh, one of that is uh, severe hypoglycemia uh, and, and coma. So you can die of insulin. It's a, it's a life-saving drug, but it's also a dangerous drug. And it is an other anabolic hormone, which um, leads to weight gain, uh, which is not desired in type two diabetic patients. So what we have found is a, a, a target where we can insulin sensitize in beta cells. And that um, many years ago has already been shown that insulin IGF is so important for this, 
uh, beta cell health and, and, and regeneration. And we think that uh, this is an entry point for regeneration. So we hope that in the next hundred years, um, we will find treatments which are not only treating the symptoms, hyperglycemia, uh, but which also, which also can basically cure the disease. And that's why we have to understand more about beta cell development, regeneration, uh, to have new disruptive therapies for diabetic patients. So with this, I would like to end. Um, thank the people uh, in the lab. So this is the Inceptor team. Um, I'm, we have uh, great funding um, from the Ministry of Health, but also from the German Diabetes Center, from the Helmholtz Diabetes Center. I have great collaborations um, and I'm happy to take a couple of questions if there's still time. So thanks for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Lickert. Uh, if anyone has questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat or the Q&A. Uh, Dr. Lickert, I think that insulin inhibitory receptor looks particularly interesting. That, that seems pretty cool. How exciting. Thank you. No, I think it's a very important discovery. I mean, um, we already know that we can drug it. We have drugs against this receptor and we can basically um, stop um, at the progressive uh, beta cell decline in, in, um, in really um, severe diabetes models, mouse models. I mean, now we have to translate this to human, yeah? but the drugs we have already. <laughs> Wow, that's that's great. That's what I was going to ask you, Heiko, is, is whether you have, you know, the drugs in, but whether the drugs in hand are are potentially clinically useful. Because obviously, you need, as you point out, you need an inceptor to maintain islet homeostasis, right, to avoid the uh, the insulin, you know, feedback signaling. So, so how can you achieve a balance between between that? Yeah. So Benoit, it is when. Um, uh, Inceptor is actually part of the vicious cycle of insulin resistance because when a normal beta cell is under stress, metabolic stress or autoimmune stress, it starts to de-differentiate yeah? and it loses the identity. And what happens is that Inceptor actually at the same time also gets upregulated. So because it's inhibitory for the insulin signaling pathway, it's part of this vicious cycle of um, uh, increased insulin resistance. And when we block Inceptor, we can actually resensitize in a diseased model. We can resensitize insulin signaling. We can preserve the beta cell mass with this. Um, and now we just have to GMP produce basically these antibodies, which we have generated for clinical testing. Uh, I see that we have another question here in the chat. Um, uh, Eric Small asks, is the Inceptor regulated, re regulated in disease and is it expressed on muscle cells? Yeah, so Inceptor is not expressed in muscle fat and liver. In the beginning, we were actually a bit disappointed because, you know, the ph pharma industry is looking for insulin sensitizing agents in the metabolic active tissues. But it's a good thing that it's only expressed in the endocrine compartment. Uh, and it is regulated in disease. I think you were typing while I was saying something. But um, <laughs> so in type 1 and type 2 diabetes, and we know this uh, in mouse, and we also know it in human, um, it gets upregulated, and it's part of this vicious cycle. And you really have to block its function. And that uh, resensitizes uh, and revitalizes, so to say, these, um, these cells. Thanks. Nice Thanks. question. All right, uh, Vasu asked, uh, is Inceptor expression dynamic dynamically regulated in alpha cells also? It is expressed in alpha cells um, and um, we knock it out. Um, we have uh, knocked it out um, in both uh, alpha, beta um, cells. And so far we don't see any phenotype. We only see that it functions in, uh, in beta cells, but there could be um, a cross-regulation, which we still have to understand. Um, yes, very important. All right, does anyone else have any other questions? All right, I think that's it. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. All right, thank you, Heiko, that was wonderful.